Which you guys got another video here for you. This one's another zero access rootkit on the system that's stopping me from running applications and also uh, it gives, gives you some, some of them give you redirects, slow the PC up, and all different types of scenarios you may be having with the uh, computer um, advertisements uh, crashing and stuff like that. Um, in this case, uh, this one's a hidden file, and I'm going to show you how to detect it and how to remove it. Or one of the ways to remove it. There's a numerous different ways. Um, but if you're having trouble running applications, then this is a good way of doing stuff. So what we're going to do here is go into my computer, and then uh, C drive, and then inside Windows, there's a folder inside here called Installer. You can't see it, and that's because it's a hidden folder. So we're going to go to Organize, Folder and Search Options here, and then View Tab. I'm going to show hidden files and folders and drives. So take the tick out of hide extensions and temporarily we're just going to take the tick out of her hide protected operating system files and folders. And we're going to put, click OK there. We're going to put that back afterwards because you don't want to leave that um, open like that. And there we can see there's a folder that's now been shown up which is normally uh, invisible. And there's a load of stuff inside here. And what interests me is this folder here. This is a, a, a typical uh, rootkit on the system. And uh, this one's zero access. And it's not very nice. And uh, it stops you from doing certain stuff. And it's like a backdoor, really. Allows uh, nasty activity. And what we're going to do is remove this from the system. Now, you can't just go deleting this folder. It won't allow you to do that. It won't allow you to do it inside Command Prompt either. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, use a live CD to remove this. And uh, as you can see, you can't rename it either. It won't allow you to rename. So even if I just try to put virus in there, it won't allow you to do that. Okay, so that's one location of the actual uh, file. And you can see the date modified. It's saying it's an old uh, date modified, which I know is not right. But this is what they're doing nowadays. Um, no people use date modified, so you can't always go for that. Uh, you just got to use your gut feeling really and check all these locations where these types of things hide. Okay, so what we're going to do here is go to the user's account. Also go to test, which is the account that's infected. And then app data. And then local. And in there you'll see that other folder again. The same folder number. Inside here there's some uh, files. And it's this file that's going to be causing you, uh, stopping you from running certain stuff. It's going to reboot the system into Puppy Linux. It's a free download you can use. I'm going to restart the system now and boot to our Puppy Linux. Okay, we'll let this load in. Doesn't take too long to load up. You don't have to use Puppy Linux, as I said, you can use uh, Live CDs, Hiram's Boot CD, Ulmer Boot CD for Win, anything like that that allows you to get into there and to remove those files and folders from there. I'm going to click OK here. It just sort of gives you an idea of ways to do things. Here's, I'm going to come across to Xversa and push Enter. And once I'm there, I'm going to select the resolution that you want. Doesn't really matter, really. I'm going to click OK here. And our drive should load up at the bottom. I'm going to click on the drive that we want to use. OK, so we've now clicked on the drive and we can now see the files on our Windows uh, folder there. So, what we're going to do is we're going to click on Windows and uh, Installer. Obviously, you can see the files and folders here because uh, we're in a live environment. And there we have the actual folder there that I want to remove from the system. I'm going to go to the DIR part. And then we're going to come down to where it says delete. And I want to put force in there to make sure we force delete this. And then we can go on to quiet if you want to. And then say yes. And it will just delete that from the system. Okay, now if you didn't put that in there, it would ask you every single time it wants to delete a file. I'm going to delete all those. I'm going to go back here and back again. Okay, so what I want to do is come to the user accounts and then go to my account that's infected, which is in test, 
and then app data and then we want to go to local and there you can see that folder again I'm going to right click on this same thing dir and then come down to the delete again put the false delete in and also the quiet delete and say yes to that and that will delete that off the system okay so pretty much that's that out of the way now now we can boot back up and then edit the registry the way we want to see fit to get this system back up and running that's so let's uh, reboot the system Okay, so that's now booted back up to the desktop. There's still some areas where we need to uh, fix. So what I want to do first is uh, go back here and I want to actually go into organize and put the tick back into the uh, hide protect, uh, Windows operating system files just to hide that again and once we've done that we can now go into the registry now you will, may see still problems uh, running programs and stuff uh, because of the actual registry has been uh, changed as you can see so what we need to do is fix that so I'm going to go to regedit and I'm going to go to regedit ok so now we've got that I'm going to go to a computer here and we're going to do a search for an actual key uh, to find the actual key that's been changed now the first one we're going to be searching for is on the screen right now and I'm going to put that inside here and this is the first one that we're going to be doing a search for ok I'm going to go find now or find next and straight away you can see the one that's been highlighted down the bottom here I'm going to click on the little tab there and this is the one in uh, proc server uh, 32 and there you can see the default key has been changed and we need to change this back and I'll give you the actual key that needs to be changed inside there okay so what we want to do here is delete this one here and we want to paste in our new key that goes in there this is the key that should be inside there I'm going to click OK here and that's now been changed back so the next thing we want to do is come up to the top again and go back to computer here and we're going to search for another uh, key. I'm going to go to edit, find. The key we're looking for is this one here now. I'm going to find next. Okay, so I'm going to come down just to make sure that's not been changed. Again, you can see that's been changed and we need to put this back to what it should be. And you can see it's using that folder there uh, to put the location in to block everything. So we want to delete all that stuff. And the key we want to put back in there is this key. And then we're going to click OK here and that will put that back to the way it should be okay one more thing that I wanted to do was do find next again for that same one we've edit, edited this part here what I want to do next is do find next and then once you've done that you should see that folder and I want to get rid of those files there so I'm going to delete that whole folder like so and I think uh, what we're going to do here now is pretty much uh, run, a, run some scans on the system just to make sure that everything's cleaned up okay so what we want to do here now is go to MS config as well I'm going to open this up and we're going to remove these from the uh, start up here 
again you can see this one here I'm going to click OK there so I'm going to close this off and reboot the system first and quickly reboot Okay, so we're back at the desktop here, and we should now have uh, program access again. There we go, we can now open up our programs. And what I would suggest here is uh, running TDSS Killer programs like this, and uh, also Hitman Pro and uh, Malwarebytes and stuff like that. And I would definitely run those. So I'm going to have a look at Malwarebytes here, I'm going to give this a quick scan find out if there's anything on the system I'm going to do an update here make sure you do an update get the latest definitions and uh, I'm going to click OK here I'm going to run a quick scan now again if you can run scans uh, make sure that you run scans rather than doing it manually um, but sometimes these types of rootkits and uh, zero access will stop these from running and they will close them down and you won't be able to do it so doing it manually is sometimes the only way around it now obviously this is just one variant there is different ones on the system at times so you do need to use different methods okay so there's the actual zero access that I downloaded and it's in my downloads folder it's not been activated but that's the rootkit that I used and uh, so that's come up clean so that's not activated so that's okay and again um, I would advise you to run Hitman Pro and TDSS Killer I'm just gonna quickly run TDSS Killer just to show you that the systems clean and then you should run some other stuff and remember uh, cleared off your system restore points and then create a new system restore point once it's all cleaned and you should be back up and running and uh, I hope this helps you out my name is Brian from Brytech.co.uk if you enjoy these videos guys remember hit that subscribe button and share support rate and favorite all my videos if you enjoyed them and I'll be making more videos again in the future so I hope this one helps you out see you later